Mike Demergis here with Professor Matt Carey from the Lepentis School of Business, and we have coming up pretty soon after the Super Bowl, the XFL is back. Uh, take two, do they have a chance? Well, I think they certainly have a chance, although we all got a little bit out over our skis with the Alliance of American Football last year where they had one good week of the curiosity seekers and everybody was ready to say it's a triumph and then you know a month later they were out of business. Um, Vince McMahon, he's a proven uh, showman even though he had a hard time the last time he got into football, but maybe he's learned from his mistakes. And I think really they target those people that can't live without football. And after that week after the Super Bowl, they're really looking for something to, to fill the times. But it, it's just not football. You need some kind of brand names out there. The USFL did that better than anybody, bringing in people like Herschel Walker and then Jim Kelly. Uh, they went after Dan Marino, didn't draft him. They went after John Elway uh, as well. You got, you got to bring in some of the big names. That's certainly one thing that the AFL didn't do and that the XFL has to do um, if they want to succeed. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you saw it and call it right back with the USFL. I mean, they really were putting a decent product on the field with some big names. And, the, you know, the fatal mistake, depending on who you ask, is trying to go head-to-head -head with the NFL, which wasn't really going to work. But if the XFL stays within its sort of sweet spot and they get some names that people want to see, if they can attract that, if they have the money and the capital to attract that, it might just work. What do you think is the biggest uh, future for sports uh, as we look beyond into the 2020s into 2030, what do you think the networks are looking? I think the networks are going to have a hard time with all the streaming and the young generation that's come into, um, that's coming into their own, that's used to alternative consumption of, of sports and other things. I mean, the beauty of sports is that you've, you know, you've, you've tried to replace it with DVRs and other things, and everybody wants to watch sports live. And the question becomes, who's going to do it? I mean, you've already seen in baseball, they've done it on Facebook. Um, Amazon's getting into the game, Twitter's gotten into the game. So there are a lot of these alternative um, distribution methods that are coming up. I think one of the big things for the, the whoever winds up owning that is going to be sort of virtual reality and allowing the fans to have some kind of experience that makes it think like they're at the game. So you mean to tell me we're going to put Lazy Boy out of business, we're going to put Best Buy out of business with the big screens. I want to sit back in my Best Buy on a Sunday. <laughs> afternoon when it's November and December in the Northeast sit back watch my big screen yeah, people are really gonna be they're gonna give up that to watch device games on devices I can't see that com completely taking over particularly when you talk about the NFL you know college football on Saturdays the NFL on Sundays Monday nights going to bars I mean it's part of this the social scene sure it's a it's a good point and um, but remember we're talking about a generation that Pays big money but to, their to eyes are going to go. Their eyes are going to go, know. though. They're going to need glasses. They're not going to be able to look into their little screens. Like, that's well, I, I, I hear you. And my son is Exhibit A. I mean, he's watching everything on his little phone, and now he's about to go out on his own, and he's got a job. And what's the first purchase he wants to make? Big flat screen TV so he can watch sports at home. And he spends a lot of time in bars watching sports and being right. interactive. But I think the gambling thing is also another piece of the puzzle here. Um, when people talk about ESPN's peaked and gone down, I think they've got a whole second life here with the gambling as, as long as that sports gambling trajectory continues to rise. Yeah, Jimmy the Greek was 50 years ahead of his time. He was. He's <laughs> Professor Matt Carey from the Lepenta School of Business. I'm Mike Demergis.